Hi, and welcome to the Haverhill Journal, where we give you a quick look at what's going on in our city. I'm Lindsay Paris, and this week's show is brimming with cooperative spirit. Later, we'll be meeting two groups, one involved with food and one with music, but both with the same goal, of bringing together locals who are passionate about their ideas and who are bringing that passion forth into the community. But first, the demand for highly skilled healthcare professionals has grown exponentially in recent years. But the high price of pursuing a degree has long been a barrier to entry. But now, the brand new, state-of-the-art healthcare education facility at Northern Essex Community College's Lawrence campus, the Ibrahim L. Hefney Center, is breaking through that barrier. The journal stopped into the simulation lab to see how a real-life emergency situation is recreated using pioneering technology to provide hands-on training for students. Sir, how are you doing? You okay? I'm responsive. Let's get uh, listen to the lung sounds. The $27.4 million L. Hefney Center opened last year and is the home base for over 20 associate's degree and certificate programs, including paramedic technology. We followed three paramedic students as they reenacted an actual rescue scene using the simulation lab on campus. All right, let's go to the ambulance. I decided to come to Northern Essex Community College's program because I heard it was really good, um, has a good reputation. Uh, it's also the closest one to me in this area, which was also a big deciding factor. Being a student here, the, the thing I enjoy the most is just, uh, you know, camaraderie with my classmates and just being able to joke around and just, you know, but very seriously, you know, we're learning too. We've learned quite a lot in a seemingly very short amount of time, but I've pretty much loved every minute of it. Our paramedic program has been in existence here for a while. They have one of my favorite programs personally, I shouldn't say that, but I will. Um, they've actually the only program here that has got two dedicated lab spaces. So they have a learning lab where they're actually learning the initial skills, and then they have the ambulance lab where they go in and they put those skills into practice through a simulation. Working with these mannequins originally was really, really terrifying. They're anywhere from like fifty to $200,000, so Nia say, really afraid to touch this stuff. But as time's gone on, we've gotten really cool scenarios with it, like the one we just did with the covering the whole guy with burns and everything. It was just a lot of fun. And for someone like me working in hospital, it's a ton more fun getting to actually get all this work out in the ambulance and everything else and getting to run the call from start to finish. I don't know any other community college that has the level of um, technology that we have here. The, the price is right because it's a state-run community college uh, program, and we have um, state-of-the-art uh, technology that's not even in some of the four-year colleges and more. What I really enjoy about the program are the scenarios that we do. We have really great mannequins that are able to simulate a real living, breathing human being, and we have quite a few of them. Uh, the ambulance is also really great because we get to practice being on the scene. The simulation lab contains an intensive care unit, trauma room, maternity unit, studio apartment, acute care hospital room, and even a working ambulance donated by Trinity EMS. The facilities can be used not only by NECC students, but also law enforcement and safety personnel and other outside groups with a need for emergency medical training. I've gone to many simulation labs around the country, uh, conferences and tours, and I don't think I've seen any community college anywhere that I've been that has the level of this facility, um, equipment-wise, technology-wise, and the space-wise. And this is also a great resource for the community. We have had local partners coming in here, ambulance companies, fire departments who come in and do training, and we really enjoy that. These are not students, these are professionals, but they um, need to practice the same things, things that maybe they don't get to see very often. You might work five or ten years and never actually see a burn patient, but when that happens, you need to know what to do, and it needs to be right there on the top of your head. Well, I want to introduce you to our human patient simulator. This gentleman is our highest performing uh, patient simulator. He cost about $200,000. He has a blood pressure, heart rate, uh, respiratory rate. He breathes according the same way that we do. This person also takes medication and knows what type of medication that you're giving him. It's a wonderful, wonderful learning tool. And they practice here rather than on the patients in the hospital. I've fallen in love with what I did before I came here, and this is just making me re-fall in love with what I do regularly. So it's so what I want to do for a good long time until 
You know, I just can't anymore. Two, three. For more information on using the facilities of the L. Hefney Center, visit necc.mass.edu or contact Maureen McGonigal at 978-655-5822. Food co-ops have been an established part of the grocery landscape for decades, but after peaking in popularity in the 1960s and 1970s, the number of co-ops in the Merrimack Valley has dwindled to none, until now. The Merrimack Valley Food Co-op is a startup group of local residents working to get the word out about the benefits that a co-op will bring to the region, as the journal learned when meeting with its founders last month. For over four years, Suzanne Carey Fernandez has been working to bring a new player onto the local grocery scene, a full-service food co-op selling a wide range of organic and locally grown foods that's open to all. A food co-op is a grocery store. The kind, the, what we're trying to do is a, is a grocery store. So you would go in seven days a week, normal grocery store type of hours, and you would find everything that you would want to purchase as far as you know, dairy and produce and breads and meats and fishes. I think some people think it's just bulk food or it's just granola or it's only vegetarian things, but it's a, it is an actual market. The difference is, difference between a, us and a market basket, principally is the ownership. A co-op is owned by the members. Specifically, a co-op is formed to meet those members' specific needs. So most co-ops are focused on natural and local products because that's what the membership wants. Right now, we're hoping that the cooperative will be maybe a 5,000 retail square foot space that uh, is warm and inviting to everybody. We want it to be a one-stop shop so that it's convenient for people. Uh, personally, I would love to have you know takeaway types of things, pre-made dinners, helping uh, busy families that, that want to have something healthy but want to have a nice quick option they can just pick up. The MVFC has already grown its membership role to over 150 members and counting. It's a win-win for everyone when you consider the payoff in terms of both better food quality and savings on your grocery bill. The Merrimack Valley Food Co-op membership fee is a one-time per household $150. People are able to pay that in, in payments or they can pay it at one time, but it's a one-time lifetime fee. Um, you purchase a membership for your household, anyone living in that household can use that membership. With that share, you're allowed to you come to your shop and you get a, uh, at the end of the year, you can get a certain percentage of what you spent at the store back as a dividend. Having a co-op here in Haverhill, we've gotten so much positive feedback from people and uh, it's exciting because we've been working on this for four years and it's it's a lot of work it's a long process but people's reaction when they understand what a co-op is and that's the important thing we really want people to understand a co-op is a store it is a community owned member owned business talking to farmers talking to people that live here in Haverhill and the surrounding towns it's it's a really important time for the for our food to make our our healthier choices, and not just eating something that you know people label as healthy, but uh, but something that's going to be good long term, and it's it's exciting. If your hunger to help build a local food co-op has been awoken, visit the MVFC's website at mvfood.coop, on Facebook at Merrimack Valley Food Co-op, or by emailing info at mvfood.coop. The cooperative spirit is all around Haverhill, not only in food, but in local music, too. The Merrimack Valley Collective, an innovative group of Haverhill-based musicians and its Heaventown Presents series, is becoming known as the place to see incredible local talent. HC Media's Sarah McCarthy was at a recent performance to see how it all goes down. Look to the horizon, there were nothing but clouds It's cold, I'm tired, and it shouldn't be this hot Gone are the days of just messing around Bumming down hills on the smoothest of bounds I follow no guy, she's covered A bunch of friends and myself started the Merrimack Valley Collective uh, Just kind of an underground open mic We throw shows every, every month or so It started kind of as house parties where we want to focus more on people playing music together than like drinking a bunch of beers. <laughs> the collective is a community that Haverhill needs. Now get up and ride, cause if you ever wonder what it's like to be without everything.
thing you've ever known. I am, I've been playing since I was like eight. Uh, moved to Haverhill, got in 06 or 05, something like that. Well, I, ma I mainly uh, play drums with uh, my band, Cliffside Caves. I am hopefully an emerging, up and coming singer songwriter in like a folk genre. I'm a musician. Uh, I play guitar and sing and write songs. Um, I'm in a band called Eagle in the Attic. We're a brand new band. I think like each person in the collective has their own community and it's all about bringing everybody's community together and creating an even bigger one. The location changes every week or every other week just to kind of <laughs> to keep it interesting to it's more it's more about you know everyone's more about equality and you know sharing space and just kind of maybe people are able to open themselves up to you know sharing of their space with others and I think that's a really important thing in music and art in general Heaven Town I don't really know what the story about that is I mean Haverhill is like a H and a V in there <laughs> I don't know Haverhill Heaven I guess it almost fits not really there is a sign up on the stage that says Heaven Town, and I had to ask, like, is Heaven Town a place nearby? Is it like, why is Haverhill like? Heaven Town came from Haverhill always being called Hell Town. It has such a negative connotation, and we thought we'd put a positive spin on it. We're like we're really proud to be from this place. We think a lot of good can come from it. The truth is stranger than fiction, and I will be the first to tell you. Thanks. All right, that's really my time. I promise. Thanks, everybody. Catch Heaven Town Presents at the Chit Chat Upstairs and other local venues on Friday and Saturday nights throughout the summer. On May 30th, the Buttonwoods Museum hosted an opening reception for the Greater Haverhill Arts Association's 2015 exhibition. Over 30 paintings and pieces were submitted to the exhibition and awards were presented for Best in Show and Exceptional Works. Musical entertainment was provided by Flutes Inc. under the leadership of Karen Chu. You can visit the GHAA's exhibit to enjoy this locally created artwork at the Buttonwoods through June 14th. If you have a story or event you'd like to see featured on the Haverhill Journal, call us at 978-372-8070 or email info at mediahc.org. And don't forget to like us on Facebook or at our YouTube channel, HCTV Haverhill. And that's what's happening in Haverhill the week of June 4th. I'm Lindsay Paris, and we'll see you next time.